Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and welcome to the fall major. This is going to cover the rookie division qualifying round. You see here I shot a minus 14. It's a decent score. All in all, I found this to be a difficult uh, tournament to shoot, but I'm excited to show my replays with you as I do have a few drops uh, to get you on the board and moving on to the next round. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button. And secondly, if you like my content, please take a moment there to hit that thumbs up and give the video a like. All right, let's go ahead and head into hole number one. We're gonna go no moving target. That means we're gonna set our spins first, and then we're only going to move our target when we go to adjust for the wind. Full top, so six top, two and a half bars of side spin to the right. Extra mile level nine players. Let's go ahead and just keep this one right here at six top and two and a half to the right. If you're playing at the lower level extra mile, you could add a little bit more overpower if you want to. But all in all, you know, the drive here, I'm adding half a ball of OP. And we're just trying to get this thing up the fairway very nicely. Uh, lower level extra miles, you could even play yourself with a Titan ball if you wanted to. So we hit this one 380, and that's the number that I'm looking for because I'm able to drop it a few times at that range. Here you're going to see with the sniper, I'm playing at 0% at mid. So if you're a lower level extra mile player, don't worry. You can see here that we're still at mid distance of our club. You might be at mid, you might be at max, but you should still be taking it with your sniper. Here I make my adjustment. I do hit a perfect ball. I'm able to hit the middle of the pin and get that one to drop right there. So all in all, hole number one, you know, looks good as far as that goes. If you're a lower level player and all you have is maybe a Viper, uh, I do have a shot here with the Viper as well. You're going to notice I'm going with full backspin on a Viper 10. Same thing here, putting my ball guideline right to the hole, aiming middle of the cup. Hit a perfect ball. And this one swirls the cup and drops in. So hole number one does give us a good chance to pick up that eagle and get ourselves off to a strong start. And there's a couple different clubs you can pick it up with. Now that'll take us right here into hole number two. We're going to play this one 30% at minimum distance. We are going to be going with the rough bump. We're going to have to go with the quasar as well. Now you can see here on my spin adjustments, I go one back and 1.8 to the right. So again, one back, 1.8 to the right. Take a look at where I'm, I'm setting up here. Ball guideline is favoring the left-hand side of the hole. Then I move it to the dead center. So I always point that out when I make that small little adjustment. I do move it to the center of the pin. What I would like you to try to do is go ahead and just add the full right spin to this shot. So with the Quasar, let's go ahead and play this one two bars of side spin to the right. I think that will be better off because you can see here that after I clip the rough, I'm just gonna barely miss this one to the left-hand side. We do like the speed with the one bar of backspin because it comes in with perfect speed to the pin. But like I said, let's try to do that with two bars. Now, if you're a lower level player and you have a Viper, you can do the same shot. Let's take a look at it. Here I'm going one back, one and a half bars of side spin to the right. So with the Viper here, I have one and a half. This is about the highest wind you're going to get. Now, for some reason here with this club, I did an offset to the left-hand side. This was my first looks at it, and uh, this ball does go into the hole. So I do pick up a hole-in-one with the Viper, which is nice because it gives you a couple different looks at the hole, and it also gives you a couple different club options you could use. Now, one thing, you are seeing a hole-in-one with a Viper. So even if you have a sniper, 
you could still get out here and take this shot with a Viper. Just because you have a sniper doesn't mean you have to use it, as you do see the hole in one right there. Okay, hole number three, we're going to go 10% at max. A power four or a power five ball is recommended if you have it because it will make your drive easier here in the tailwind. And shot number two is a mile away. So you're going to need to bring your club that gives you the most power on hole number two or shot number two, like your big dog. Here you see with a Titan ball, I am going full overpower with my shot. So again, that was full overpower. I clip the rough and I roll out. So all that is good. And that's gonna take us right here to shot number two where I don't do any adjustment. We are getting tailwind. I am going with full top and then two bars of side spin to the left, which is max. And then I will be going with overpower combined with max curl to the left. Uh, I will tell you that a great right will probably put you into the rough. If you're gonna hit great, you want it to be great left. Great left should be fine. You're gonna see here that I hit a perfect shot and I almost roll into the rough, although I'm able to catch this little slope here and roll back down towards the fringe, but that's gonna leave me for a very easy chip in for my eagle on hole number three. So again, be careful with shot number two, make sure that you bring a club that has good power so that you can get yourself up to the green area. That'll bring us on the hole number four. I'll show you two ways to play hole number four. My shot is played 50% at max. If you're gonna play this shot, I suggest you go ahead and go 70% at max, and that'll be a starting point. I don't know if it'll go in at 70, but it should be closer than my shot, as long as you duplicate exactly what I do. I have one bar of topspin. Let's take a look at where I'm aiming, if we can see these green squares. So this is one bar of topspin, aiming right there. Again, I pulled this one 50%. and you're still gonna see I missed to the right-hand side. Now, we can try to play this one with a Guardian as well. So with a Guardian, this is shot right here is 35% at minimum distance. So again, the shot you're seeing here is played 35% at minimum. Notice the backspin and then ball guy line going to the hole and through the back of the cup. I hit a perfect shot. And this shot just barely, barely misses to the right. So again, the speed is good. We burn the right hand edge of the cup. So we could add maybe 5% more elevation to the shot or go ahead and just go with an offset. For me, I'd probably just go with the offset as I think that's gonna be the best way to get that one dialed in for the hole in one. Hole number five is 10% at max. I'm gonna show you two different drivers you can use on this. Extra mile eight and extra mile nine players, go ahead and use your extra mile. If you have anything lower, I suggest you go ahead and go with the big topper. We are gonna play both clubs 10% at max and we must clip the rough and roll out. I'll show you what I mean here. All right, so big topper, full top, no side. Notice up here, my ball guide line is developed. If you take that shot and hit it, you're gonna send that ball into the water. This is a dangerous drive, although it is the best way for us to pick up the eagle because a lot of opponents are picking up a birdie. Notice I've got my ball guide line in the rough, just like that. See how it's in the rough? I use about a quarter of a ball of overpower. Higher level big topper players, you are not going to need overpower. But take a look at this. We hit the rough and we roll out. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, again, if you have an extra mile eight or nine, you can just take it with your extra mile. We're going to apply our top spin. We're going to move around until we have a nice rough bump, just like that. You'll notice here at the extra mile, I don't go with any overpower at all. 
It's a much more powerful club than the big topper. And we clip the rough and we roll out. That's nice. That's exactly what we're looking for. That'll give us a good opportunity on shot number two to try to pick up an albatross, but more importantly, just pick up the eagle because a lot of people are struggling. It's not the easiest albatross shot. The greens uh, and the fairway bounces on this course are kind of tricky, but you notice here I applied backspin, applied with some side spin to the left. I do have the ball guideline bouncing into the cup. Unfortunately, here we hit a great shot, so, you know, unless we misadjust, we're not going to make it, but still hit the pin and bounce out. All in all, I'm playing this hole for an eagle. It's just a scary drive, and I hope you're all able to execute it, and then we move on to the next hole here. Again, this is going to be a no-moving target shot, six top, three bars, a side spin to the right, higher level, extra, not, extra, <laughs> extra mile level nine players, just keep it at six top. This is a normal shot with no overpower. And we land on the fairway very nicely here. Now that's gonna leave us for shot number two, which we're gonna play 10% at mid, and we're gonna go for a rough bump with our Goliath. So keep in mind, if you have a Goliath, uh, pack it, because we are gonna go with a rough bump. We're gonna apply more top spin than this. We're gonna go with five top. And about 0.9 bars a side spin to the left. Now you have to see here, we have to move our target pretty far back into the rough to get a consistent ball guideline. Again, this course uh, is a little bit tricky when it comes to our ball guidelines and inconsistencies with the greens and roughs. So I'm trying to find all these little spots for you so that you can you know, quickly adjust your shots. But here I hit a perfect ball. And you'll see with the five top, that we come in a little bit, well, it's actually perfect speed. We just come in a little bit to the left-hand side. And that was with me adding about 0.8 or 0.9 left side spin. So, you know, we might be able to reduce that side spin by a little bit, but I'm not sure what's gonna happen to our ball guideline when we try that. All right, that's gonna take us on to our next par three. You're gonna see here, I'm playing this one 40% at max. Again, 40% at max. Let's take a note at the spins and then the landing spot. Two bars of side spin to the left with 2.3 bars of back spin. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is where I settle up on. Look at the blue ring on the rough, just like that. And then take a look at where my ball guideline is. If you notice where the cup is, we can count the green squares down. And let's take a look at the dark green squares. So right below the cup is one dark green square, then a light green, then a dark green, then a light green, then a dark green. So basically I am aiming in the middle, the bottom middle of the third dark green square below the pin. Now I'm leaving that one pretty short, but you're gonna see here the way this green rolls or the way the wind is pushing, it does get us to the pin. And keep in mind, this was 2.3 back with two bars of side spin to the left. You see we get a nice roll. It's absolute perfect speed. We come very close, leaving this one just to the left-hand side. So what we need to do is move our target over a little bit more to the right. All right, that's going to take us here to hole number eight. Uh, on the drive, I'll tell you something you can do differently, or you can just do it this exact same way. But we're going to go with a katana. And then for me, I'm going, you're going to see three bars of top spin combined with one bar of side spin to the right. I back my target up until the bottom of the yellow is up on the rough. This is only 2.2 mile per hour wind. If you get higher wind, you need to add about another half a bar to one bar of top spin. So if you get to this hole and you have like four and a half mile per hour wind, like if you double me up, you're going to need to add one full bar of top spin. You can see here that I have plenty of room on the fairway left. And this is another hole in which I'm gonna show you two different clubs you can drop it with. The first one is with the horizon. I'm gonna go full backspin on my horizon here. I'm gonna put the ball guideline going through the cup and then I'm just gonna pull this one 10% at minimum distance. 
A couple of my accounts, they don't have the Thorn, they don't have the Sniper, so I have to play with clubs like the Horizon and the Viper. But it just goes to show you that, you know, if we can just find the right elevations and the right spin adjustments, then shots can be dropped no matter what kind of clubs that you have. But here you see we hit the center of pin and we drop this one in. And now I'll show you the same type of shot except with the sniper. And we also drop it as well. I played this one 10% at mid. And then I'm going to go with my backspin at three bars of backspin. I think that'll give us good control. It gives us a nice looking ball guideline too. Same thing, ball guideline going through the center of the cup. 10% at mid is what I pulled this one. With this club, remember I was minimum distance with my horizon. So don't get those confused. Always check the own distance of your club. You see here that we fire off another perfect ball. And this one comes in a little bit left, so we need to be careful with the sniper, but it still drops in for the eagle. All right, I hope you're enjoying the video. Please smash that thumbs up button. That would be awesome. And hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hole number nine, we're going to set our spins first. Two bars a side spin to the left, combined with about one and a half to two bars a top spin, depending on wind strength. Here I went one and a half in 3.3. I wish I would have gone two, but it really doesn't matter because shot number two is going to be the same no matter what. But I'm going to talk you through two different approaches here on shot number two. But you see on the drive, it's very easy. I apply my spins, I put my yellow ring on the rough line, and then we hit this one up the fairway. Now, if you're a more advanced rookie player and you have yourself a leveled up Grizzly, I would suggest going with the rough bump with the Grizzly. You see here that the game starts us off in the rough. You could go with a nice Grizzly rough bump with your yellow ring on the rough and try to dial that in. I do not know what the elevation will play. I do not know what the spin adjustments will play. It would be something that you'd want to practice, but that is a great, great shot to pick up the Albatross. I don't play with the Grizzly and Rookie because I don't think a lot of my followers have a high level Grizzly to pull it off. So I always go with the Backbone and you have a great chance for an Albatross with the Backbone as well. I'm going max backspin. You're gonna see here, I'm putting my ball guideline right in front of the cup, trying to get the ball to bounce into the hole. Here I make my wind adjustment. We are getting tailwind. With max backspin, I come in a little bit too hot and obviously to the right hand side. So I wanna back this up about half of a green square from where I aimed at, just to account for the wind push, okay. That's it for that. I'm going to play some Pro during my lunch break today. Pro will come out probably later on this afternoon or tonight. I have a 13-hour workday ahead of me, so I'll play as much as I can during my lunch break. I appreciate you watching, and everybody have a great day.